A state audit of 2021 funding finds that the state of Oklahoma mishandled $29 million in COVID relief money. Pretty staggering number. Joining us this morning, the author of that report, State Auditor and Inspector Cindy Bird. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Good morning. Good morning to you. So the money that we're talking about, this federal money, was meant for things like education and transportation, kind of across the board to get through the pandemic. What areas specifically did you find that the state misused all this money? Well, we reported systemic issues across uh, several agencies. We found that the state of Oklahoma was not following just the basic steps for administering federal grants, like making sure you had proper supporting documentation or verifying that the goods or services were received. Uh, as we reported that, you know, typically the state of Oklahoma expends around uh, six to seven billion dollars in expenditures for federal grants. This year they spent 14 billion dollars. So there was a you know, drastic increase in the dollar amount that was being administered. And we have seen usually around five million in question cost, maybe up to five years ago. And we are trending in the wrong direction because now we're up to $29 million. And what that means is that money was sent to, that was sent to our state for the citizens of the state to deliver services isn't really getting to them if it's been misspent. In fact, the Attorney General Gettner Drummond calling for an investigation because of your audit. He said that, quote, he refuses to tolerate what he calls pervasive culture of waste, mismanagement, and apparent fraud. How is that different from the audit that you released? Can you kind of explain that? Yes, so we do different types of audits. Uh, we can do a financial statement audit that's going to opine on whether or not the numbers are correct on a financial statement. We do what we did on this audit. It's a federal audit where we're specifically looking to see did the state of Oklahoma spend the federal grant money the way the federal government said to spend it. And then, of course, there is an investigative audit. Those types of audits are where we dig in to see who's at fault, uh, who was responsible for misspending funds and if there is any, you know, embezzlement, misappropriation of assets type things. You uh, always release your, your state audits and your findings, and it seems like if we're just speaking openly that there's always some type of misuse of money. What shocks you about this particular case? It seems like, is anyone ever held accountable in these cases and the findings? Uh, well, first I wanna say, you know, you don't hear from the auditor unless there is something wrong, mm -hmm. because an audit's critical in nature, right? Mm -hmm. We're only going to point out what we found. Right. Uh, what's different in this audit is that there, there was a lot of funds misspent during that pandemic. So whose fault was and, that? I mean, who, who, who do you point the blame at? Who's accountable for that? Okay, so across the state, different agencies administer these, these funds. Mm -hmm. This type of audit would never get to the bottom of who was responsible for any misspent funds. Mm -hmm. It's only an objective review of where the funds spent the way they were supposed to be spent. The investigative audit mm -hmm. is where we will go forward to see who's at fault. With the Attorney General. Because yes. last time you were here, we were talking about uh, Epic Charter Schools. We've talked about, you know, misspending of uh, money with Swadleys. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it seems as if vendors are blamed for not doing the right thing. I know that Ryan Walters even said, you know, we've got to make sure the vendor is held accountable and trying to give the money back. Who holds the vendors accountable? I know we're kind of asking you to put a different hat on, but you do see the big picture of this. What are your thoughts? Right, well, the questions you're asking can only be answered through an investigative audit. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be mm -hmm. looking at vendors in this type of an of a audit that we performed. And this is, you know, you don't normally hear the auditor talk about the federal audit. Mm -hmm. The audits you just mentioned were investigative audits that are usually, you know, it really it reveals behavior that the state of Oklahoma can't tolerate. This audit, why there was so much attention placed on this is because of the large dollar amount of question cost and because the money isn't getting to the citizens. That's the alarming part. So the AG calls for an investigation. Are you now allowed to do an investigative audit? Yes, uh, there is a statutory provision for the Attorney General to call on the auditor's office to ask us to do an investigative audit. The Attorney General will work closely with us in helping mm -hmm. us obtain any kind of records that we need, and then we will put that information together. I have a wonderful team. That's the group that's not being recognized mm -hmm. here. The wonderful team that did this work mm -hmm. will get that work put together, put in an audit report, present it to him. Then he will decide what further action. Just one thing on the audit, because how long did it take you to do it, and was there cooperation from the state? 
just in giving you the information? Well, it's a good question because we released the 21 audit and here we are in 23. Mm -hmm. I mentioned how much more we had received in federal grants from what the prior year from 7 billion to 14 billion in expenditures. Um, that put a hard a hardship on the office because it doubled the work. Mm -hmm. uh, across the nation, states are experiencing this and those audits were put out a little bit later. But it is, um, as we go into the 22 audit, we're going to release that this fall. So it's a continuous audit, to answer your question, it is a continuous audit that we're working on and uh, we hope to have the 22 out this fall and then the 23 will be on time Are we next gonna year. see a similar story, mismanagement? Uh, well, we, we don't have that audit complete yet. But, but you're working I, on it. I, I, we're <laughs> working on it. There, there'll be some issues to report, Could obviously. Oklahoma have to pay back any of this money? The federal government is the one who will ultimately make that decision. Um, if they decide to make the state of Oklahoma pay back any part of this $29 million, it's going to be you and I, the taxpayer, who has to pay that back. Wow. That's the unfortunate part of all of this. Cindy, anything else that you want the public to know about this? Because sometimes it seems like uh, these questions can be just over all our heads so much when you start talking about big things like that. Help, uh, anything else you want the public to know? Yes. you know. You hear the bad stuff mm -hmm. because those are the findings that we report, but this mm -hmm. is a great opportunity for Oklahoma to realize the missteps that have been taken and for us to take immediate action to not have these problems going forward and to make sure that money is getting where it's supposed to go. I think there are a lot of people in state government who do a good job, sadly. Some don't, and that's the, the things that we have to report. We did reach out to the governor's office. We want to make sure that we show you what his office said. It says in part, quote, during the COVID pandemic, Governor Stitt had a duty to get federal relief funds to students and families in Oklahoma as quickly as possible, and he responsibly accomplished just that. This is just the start of this conversation, and we'll be uh, asking more questions moving forward. Cindy Bird, thanks for joining us, and you can read that full audit report right now at news9.com. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you. you coming in and answering our questions. Thanks Thank so much.